Thank you, God, for another amazing Sunday. Thank you, God, for these people. We know that you are at work right now in us, Father, that we are your temple, that you live inside each and every one of us. And God, we just pray right now that whatever word you have for us today is of you. It's not of me, but your Holy Spirit speaking through me to these people. Soften our hearts to absorb whatever it is, God. Your people said. Amen. Amen. All right, anyone ever felt cold spiritually? Raise your hand. Everyone else leave because you're a liar. <laughs> Everyone goes through seasons. And listen, I believe God puts us through those seasons intentionally. Sometimes I think we go through these like little valleys or cold spells because God is saying, hey, you need to move. You need to do something. You need to seek me and find me. Right? So a lot of times like I'll, like, I'll condemn myself a little bit. I'll get in my own head and be like, man, you are just failing as a pastor, you're failing as a Christian, you're cold, the fruits of the Spirit are not working in you. But then I remember that in those moments, like that is the Holy Spirit working in me. That is Jesus himself calling me to him. Right, I want to start with a couple, no, no, I want to start with this. Here's an analogy for you. So Chanin the other day, Chanin's my son, he's six years old. Does anyone have kids ever realize like they like don't experience cold the same way adults do? Yeah? Well, he's out playing and he's running around the neighborhood. It's like 40 degrees at dusk and he's in a t-shirt and he is blue, shivering, running around. And I'm like, buddy, you need a coat. He's like, no, I don't want a coat. And he runs back out, comes back inside. There's this coat sitting at the table and he's literally shivering. I'm like, bud, this is not healthy. You need your coat. I don't want my coat. And I'm like, you know what? Is that not like us spiritually sometimes? Like, there's the coat right there. There's the hoodie. There's everything that I need to set my soul on fire, yet for some reason I walk around shivering. Yeah? So today's sermon is on this. It's on the infinite worth of the Word of God. The Word of God being this. Bible. I thought there was no better topic. We were talking about a staff. What better topic to talk about on the new year than the importance of being in our word, in the word of God? I'm going to read a couple of scriptures for you to start. John 15 verses four through five says this, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Here's the misconception. That the day I say I believe in Jesus, I'm abiding in Jesus every day. We can still believe in Jesus, but not abide in Jesus moment by moment, day by day. We are highly influenced by the culture in the world around us. Media, is something that they didn't have to deal with like we do 100 years ago. Where are my TikTokers at? Raise your hand. Oh, you guys are all lying. 
But I mean, these apps and these things, like if you've ever scrolled through TikTok, I mean, it is just ridiculous how hilarious some of these kids are. And the creativity, and some of it's awesome, but you get sucked into the world because there's also a ton of garbage in there, right? And it penetrates your soul and it starts to change who you are and you lose the joy that you once had in Jesus and in Christ and you're being infiltrated with the world. It's the same thing with movies. It's the same thing with Facebook. It's the same thing with so much of our culture. How much of our time is spent here where everlasting joy is actually found? Psalm 1, 2 through 3 says this, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. How many want to be that guy? But how many can honestly say that delighting in his law day and night doesn't often feel like our lives? It's not mine. It is sometimes, I'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not always a failure, but a lot of times it's not. See, my own personal life, I've recently, you know, my wife got COVID, so we had to like quarantine for a week. Then of course, what happens when I'm around my wife the whole time? I end up with COVID, I have to quarantine, and I will be honest with you, if you know me, I'm a social dragonfly, because a butterfly is feminine. I'm a social <laughs> dragonfly. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I'm a social butterfly, whatever you want to call me. And I love being around humans. I just do. I, like, if you know me, I own a gym with Brandon, and we come here, and I hang out with people, and I work out, and I'm goofy, and I'm loud, and I'm around people. If you have to put me in a box by myself, I get real mopey real quick. You can ask my wife. She's, I told you guys last time she was on my case. You need to go spend some time with Jesus. Like, I just, it's not what I love. I love to be around my friends and my people. Um, But what I found was, as opposed to me digging more into the word and spending more time with Jesus, I started feeling sorry for myself. It's like, I'm just taking a break. I'm going to start watching TV. And I'm going to scroll through TikTok. I'm going to get on Instagram. Let me open my word real quick. Okay, cool. I did a quick devotional. Check. Right? Does anyone get in those modes? The problem is, am I sitting down in this word, opening it, knowing that this thing has more power than anything I can read or touch that day. That this thing can bring a joy that I've never experienced in my life. An everlasting, eternal joy. Right, instead I'm I'm trying to find it in all this other stuff. And guess what, it's failing after fail, fail, fail. It never works. So that's where I found myself as of recently. And it's funny because this message, I love when I preach a message and they should all do this, but this one especially, when it grasps your own soul before you teach it, it makes it awesome. And and reading about and remembering the importance of the word of God has absolutely once again revitalized myself. I'm now reading the word again like I was a couple months ago or six months ago, whatever, where it's alive, where where I'm meditating and reading it slow and letting it read me. I'll get more to that later. There was this time See, if you look back, if you've been a Christian for any significant amount of time, and does everyone here remember like really high highs in their Christian walk, right? Where you just felt like you were like one with Christ, like you could feel him, you could sense him, you were just on fire. Has anyone ever experienced that? If not, I pray you do. Well, one of those times I will say, it's almost always, or it is always, when you are super attached to the word of God, but you're not just reading it to check it off a list. You're reading it because you're really interested in what it has to say. You really want to know what you need to change in your life. Like, there's a difference in reading that way versus just checking off a devotional. Well, there was this one time we were hanging out at the pool with my friends, and I was listening to an audiobook of one of my favorite pastors, um, Dallas Willard. I was listening to his biography after he had passed. And it said that one time he was so caught up in the Holy Spirit, and what he had done was he went home and he read through the entire book of John in one sitting. I mean, that's, it's, it is, it's, it's semi-impressive. It doesn't take forever. But I thought to myself, I've never done that. I literally put my headphones away. I went and grabbed my towel, all my stuff, got in my car, and I went home, and I did it. I read all the way through the book of John. And if you've never done that, what you experience is so different than reading passage by passage. You see the whole story, and it comes alive in you. 
right? But I remember being so on fire and in love in that moment with who Jesus was. And then you just kind of get cold sometimes. I just wanted to give you an example of when I've been here and when I've been here, I still battle that. But I believe God is doing a work in every one of those circumstances. He's not leaving me, right? What he's doing is he's wanting me to take steps towards him. See the difference? Now, I didn't have to look very far to recognize that I am not alone in this. There's actually stats that I looked up on Lifeway. Will you go ahead and put that chart up there for me? So here are Protestant churchgoers. Now, here's the first thing I want to talk about with this. With statistics, you always got to look at like the, the details. These are churchgoers. These are people that go to church every week. Okay, so let's start there. Some of us don't even do that. So these are the people that are in the seats every week. 32% of you read the Bible every day. Okay, so one third of us in this room read the Bible every day. A few times, a, or 27% of us read it a few times a week. 12% read it once a week. 11% of us a few times a month. 5% once a month. 12% of you never read the word. Now, here's what that says to me. All of us struggle with this from time to time. All of us can do better. But here's what it really says. It makes me somewhat excited because you know what's possible if we start taking this way more seriously and we all up our game in 2021? If we start to really, you, you do realize that Jesus is the incarnate word of God. Then when you're reading this, you're literally spending time and chewing on him himself. He's the only reason we're alive today. He's the reason you're here. He's your only purpose. If you spend more time and we get these numbers just significantly up in this room, starting with me, there is no telling what he's going to do in your life and the lives around you. Amen, Josiah. You guys are duds. All right, just joking. John Piper. So John Piper, don't love everything the guy says, but in this topic, I think he is absolutely one of the best people. He is so passionately in love with the word of God that I love his resources, if you want to look it up. Piper says this, we hold in our hands and are able to read what the creator and ruler of the universe wants us to know. Do you guys ever realize that? Do you ever think of it that way? The creator and ruler of the universe wants us to know something, and he wants us to know it in the way he wants us to know it. Because sometimes we open this and we're like, oh, this stuff's weird. Like God's like killing people, and there's like people are turning to clay and getting swallowed by whales and all this weird, like, the guy that created everything is significantly smarter than you are. Significantly more loving than you are. I don't know why he wants me to learn it in this way, but he does. So what I do is I humble myself and I open it up and say, what are you trying to say to me today? What do I need to learn? I put myself in this story. I am these people. Do you see that? So, I want to go through a list of six things why the Word of God is so important. Number one, everyone writes this down. Papers are flurrying, pens are coming out, phones. Number one, the Word of God, it gives us faith. Romans 10, 17 says this, faith comes by hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. You guys feel like you lack in faith. You feel like you kind of believe, but you have big doubts. You feel like you're going through struggles, and sometimes you're like, do I even believe in God? Here's what I can promise you. You're not spending a significant amount of time in here. I know that from experience. Spend time here and watch your faith grow. And listen, it may start off your first day, your first week, your first month. You may feel cold. Nothing may come alive in here. But Jesus has a promise in the word that says, seek me and you will find me. And I know from experience, you continue to do that, you will find him. He will show up. He will speak to you through this thing. And you'll watch it manifest in your life. Number two, through hearing and reading his word, he gives us the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? He gives us Galatians 3, 5 says, does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law 
or by hearing with faith. Ephesians 5, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your hearts. That's a parallel to Colossians 3 where it says this, let the word of Christ, the word of Christ, the incarnate word, dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Guys, you want to be filled. You ever, in the scripture, talks about being filled with the Spirit. See, you get the Spirit when you're saved. He lives inside of you. But we know this from scripture, that you can be not filled with the Spirit at times, that you can grieve the Holy Spirit. And then there's times where you're walking and it says you're filled. It talks a lot of times about when the disciples or the apostles in the beginning would be filled and they would do amazing works. If you want to walk around as a believer filled with the Spirit, then you drink this. This is how you become filled with the Spirit. If you want to, if you want to have fruit in your life, if you want people around you to see that you're on fire for, Christ, or on fire for Christ, if you want to do loving acts, you want to walk like Jesus walked, like the apostles walked, you cannot do it apart from him. You can't add Christianity to your life as like a side piece. I go to church on Sundays. Yeah, it's cool. I believe in Jesus for sure. But then through the week, you don't spend time here. Christianity is not a lukewarm thing. You can't do it like that. It's meant to take over everything about your life. Number three, it creates and sustains life. John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. Guys, without the word of God, without Jesus, we are walking dead people. We're dead in our sins. We're dead in our trespasses. See, what this does is it lights a fire. It brings life to us. Our eyes are open. You take the scales off. The way that we look at people and things all of a sudden becomes loving. And we open our eyes to what life is actually about. John 20, 31 says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. There's that life again. Jesus came, guys, so we could live a life unlike all these other people chasing wind, chasing things of the world that mean nothing, that will never give them satisfaction, ever. He came and said, no, I'm gonna show you a way where you're fulfilled where you're truly joyful, where you can walk without fear, knowing eternally you're going to be happy. Does anyone want that? Yes. Matthew 4, 4 says, but he answered, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, there's both natural and there's spiritual, and God brings them together so beautifully. We do need food to survive, but we also need this to survive because our soul and our spirit has to be alive as well, guys. We don't want to walk around dead in our spirit. It's a waste. It leads to death. It leads to destruction. It leads to no good thing in this world. Sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you is you get everything you want. You're dead in your spirit, so here's what you do. You start chasing things in the world. You get a better job. You get more money. You find the significant other you want, and life looks perfect. And at the end of it is destruction. Because you thought it was going to make your soul happy, you thought it was going to make you happy, and it ends up not. How many times do we see people with depression that are on top of the top of the top? Celebrity, have all the money, have everything that the world wants, and it still ends in destruction. Number four, it leads to freedom. John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Guys, a lot of us have addictions. Some of them are substance addictions. Some of them are porn addictions. Some of them are addictions to your job. All of us, from time to time, deal with addictions. Okay? I could hang out with you for two weeks and tell you what yours are. It might be your phone. 
It can be a lot of different things. All of us are addicts. But here's what the word of God says. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You want freedom from your addictions? It's right here. Your flesh is worthless to try to get rid of them. Number five, it enables you to defeat the devil. Guys, we don't talk about, I don't talk about the devil enough. The devil is a real, real being that wants nothing less than to get you severed and distant from your creator. Him getting rid of your job or giving you sickness or something like that, that's, that's terrible. But what he wants more than anything is you to be away from your creator. He wants a wedge between you and Jesus Christ. And think about all the ways during the week that he tries to do that. You wake up on Sunday morning, you get in a fight with your spouse. You leave church, you're feeling on fire, and you get in a huge fight with one of your friends. Right? So many different ways and devices does he use to try to sever us between our creator. 1 John 2, 14 says, I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Guys, we've got to stay in this word to defeat the enemy. Your flesh cannot do it. Let me give you a practical example. I know this because we go through times of strife with friends, strife with family. Here's a practical way of how this works out. The enemy you see is in the midst of this game. He's in the midst of us fighting with our friends or family or whatever it is. He has schemes. He makes me offended because this person said this and this person says that. And offenses start to grow. If I'm not in his word and I'm not spending time with Christ, I try to reason everything. I try to prove them wrong and me right and all of these things. And what happens is it just grows. It gets worse and worse. Offense grows. But here's what happens when I get in his word. My heart softens. I read about the fact that Christ died on a cross for me, that I was worthy of death. And all of a sudden my heart softens towards these people. And you know what? I don't have to be right. I can just love them. I can just forgive and move on because ultimately, does any of this matter? Do you see the difference between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit? That's why it's so important that we stay in this word. And the last one, the word of God is infinite worth because it is the source of full and everlasting joy. Psalm one, two through three, but it is delight, this is the one from the earlier, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Man, I read that the other day and I was just thinking about it. In all that he does. See, a worldly person reads that and thinks, oh, he has a ton of money and he just, no. It doesn't matter what life circumstance I go through. I win because I have Jesus. Right? See, I'm the guy that I'm so strong in my faith. I walk along and I get fired. I'm like, oh man, Jesus, what do you got for me? It's better than this. Because I have you. What can you take from me if I have you? Nothing. In all that I do, I prosper. Because I'm planted in his word of God. John 15, 11 says, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Guys, we have moments of happiness outside of Christ. Moments. But I believe in a joy that, is, that never goes away. That's eternal. That's the joy that I want. That's the joy I want for you guys. See, like I was talking about earlier, when you read this word, don't just check off a list. Don't just read a couple of paragraphs and be like, okay, I got the word in me today. Ask yourself, what is, God, what are you trying to tell me? Insert yourself into these stories. You're not reading about other sinners that used to be. You're reading about yourself. Do you see the difference? You want the Old Testament to come alive? Open up and see that you are those people that keep failing. Right? That Jesus had to send up his self. Jesus, I'm sorry. God had to send his son Jesus for you, not for them. There's a difference in knowing scripture. Remember this, I love this quote. The devil knows more scripture than you ever will. But he wants us to know scripture, 
to know him on an intimate level. Let it sit inside of you and grow. Worship man, you guys can come. You guys go ahead and stand up for me. Guys, my prayer is in 2021, if nothing else as a pastor of this church, gosh, if our love for the word of God would grow, if we would take it seriously every day and sit in scripture and get to know Jesus better, there's no telling what this church would do for Jesus. There's no telling what you would do for Jesus. There's no telling the potential that you, for your own joy, for your own happiness. Guys, I want it for you and I want it for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to do in January, I wanted to do something tangible that we could actually do together. In January, we're going to read through the book of John together as a church. All right? Here's the deal. There's 21 chapters in John. We're going to be so gracious that we're going to literally give you the weekends to make up days that you didn't, that you didn't read. But when you read this, here's what I want. I want us all to do this as a church. Don't just quickly read it absorb it, chew on it. Google stuff about what's going on at that time. Google stuff about backgrounds. Google stuff of words that you don't understand. I mean, I want you to grasp what you're reading. And I promise you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit will do a work in you and it will come alive. I know it can be dead at first, but remember, it's not the Bible that's dead, it's you that's dead. We're trying to wake that up. We're trying to wake that spirit up. So on January 1st, we'll post the daily reading for the day. And what I want you guys to do is we're going to read it. And I know the war women already do something like this. You're going to read it, and I want you to just write something that stood out to you. And if you don't know what to write, just look at what the person before you wrote and write something like they wrote. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about this. I want us as one body to feel unified, and we're going to do this together. Are you guys in? Yeah? yeah? yeah. All right, let me pray out real quick. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we are able to. God, there used to be Christians that didn't have access to this. And God, forgive us for taking it for granted. We can be in this thing all day long, what our souls would look like if we would take it more seriously. So Holy Spirit, we just ask you to do a work in us, to give us a desire to want more of you, Lord. And we pray for this Bible reading time through January that it would awaken our souls, that it would set us on fire. And God, whatever 2021 brings, it doesn't matter, Lord, because you are in us. All God's people say, amen.